In late March 2023, Lee Berger trekked to Brisbane, Australia for the International Science Festival. He was the keynote speaker. His first stop, KABC Radio. Radio host Sarah Kanowski, quote, Lee Berger entered the field of paleoanthropology when there was a 1 in 10 million chance he would discover anything worthwhile digging around South Africa. But this real-life Indiana Jones kept bucking the odds. End quote. The rise to the top of the field of paleoanthropology for this real-life Indiana Jones has been nothing short of spectacular, but has not been without controversy. With this video, you will learn of all the political battles and personal rivalries surrounding Lee Berger. But first, some background on Berger's career and his two amazing discoveries, Australopithecus sediba and Homo naledi. From National Geographic, Lee Berger is an award-winning paleoanthropologist whose explorations into human origins on the African continent and Asia for the past three decades have resulted in many new discoveries, including two new species of early human relatives. Continuing, a current National Geographic Explorer in residence, Berger has held positions at the University of Witwatersrand in South Africa since 1991. As a white man in post-apartheid South Africa, Berger has faced continuous threats to his position and stature. Lee Berger, as head of Department of Evolutionary Science at WITS, holds the endowed Philip Tobias chair. Berger was a PhD student under Tobias. He and Tobias co-authored a paper in 1992 on the hominid fossil finds at Gladysvale. Tobias was a controversial figure. He was a vocal opponent of apartheid, yet he was accused of racism for his belief in craniology. He made frequent expeditions in search of the mystical ape man. He would take cranial measurements of the Bushmen and other African tribal members. From ScienceDirect.com, anthropology professor Rebecca Ackerman, University of Cape Town, South Africa. Broom, Dart, and later Tobias were interested in whether Africans might represent the missing link between apes and humans primitive and less human. South Africa in turmoil. By 2008, the political situation began to shift again in South Africa. More moderate and statesman, Thabo Mbeka, a Nelson Mandela protege, ceded the government to radical African nationalist, Jacob Zuma. One of Zuma's first acts was land reform, confiscating property from whites and discouraging hiring of whites. Zuma was quoted in the South African Sunday Times as supporting radical socio-economic transformation, ensuring ownership and control not in the hands of whites. Australopithecus sediba. At one point, Berger was actually placed on a committee to find his own replacement. The young man who was hired was killed tragically in a motorcycle crash in London two weeks before he was scheduled to move to South Africa. Berger needed a big score. He had been continuing with his cave explorations during this period. He purchased satellite maps from NASA to help him identify potential cave sites for hominids. After studying satellite images of cave sites throughout South Africa, he pinpointed a handful that seemed particularly promising. One especially seemed like it was ideal, an old abandoned mine named Malapa. Along with his son Matthew, their dog, and a lab assistant, he went exploring to the isolated cave site. They trampled through high grass with poisonous snakes and wild animals. Matthew stumbled over a rock, embedded in the breccia, a clavicle, and part of a lower jawbone. Berger Sr. recognized it was a new species almost immediately. It would become known as Australopithecus sediba. With the Australopithecus sediba find, Lee Berger became an instant celebrity. The discovery was covered all over the UK and USA media. 60 Minutes did a segment on sediba. National Geographic promoted Berger to their national board. The Discovery of Homo Naledi In 2013, Dr. Berger hired his old friend, Harley Ryden Diamond Miner, Pedro Boschoff to recruit cave explorers. 
Lawshaw found two local cave club members, Rick Hunter and Stephen Tucker. After months of failure, at one cave in the Rising Star system near Johannesburg, they struck gold. Hunter and Tucker found a crevice. They crawled into it and dropped down a chute. They crawled through another space. At the bottom, they found a floor full of scattered bones. The trio rung the doorbell to Berger's home late that night. Pedro, you're gonna wanna let us in. Berger looked at the photos and instantly knew the bones were from a hominid. He was overjoyed, even giddy. He called National Geographic in Washington, D.C. and got immediate funding. Berger quickly assembled a team of six female cavers working on their anthropology PhDs to further the excavations. They were from the U.S., U.K., and Canada. Some anthropologists complain about his methods. From The Guardian, scientists playing fast and loose with the truth, 2015. The fact that Berger used only women cavers to retrieve Nalady bones only irked Berger's critics even more. One said, quote, there are many male cavers that could get in there, but that would have spoiled the publicity stunt, end quote. From the Smithsonian, over 1,550 specimens from at least 15 homo naledi individuals were eventually recovered from the site. This excavation remains the largest collection of a single hominid species found in Africa. Continuing, the Rising Star team found an additional 133 homo naledi specimens in the nearby Lesedi chamber in 2013, representing at least three other individuals. Homo naledi was originally believed to be over 1 million years old. In 2017, the Homo naledi fossils were dated to between 335,000 and 236,000 years ago. The momentous discovery won Berger a great deal of respect in the paleoanthropology community. Professor John Hawkes of the University of Wisconsin, considered one of the top researchers in the field, joined his team. But Berger soon became mired in controversy. He had made what many regarded as highly speculative claims about Homo naledi, especially with deliberate burials and possible use of fire. Some sectors of the paleoanthropology community remain skeptical. From Gizmodo, 2015, anthropologist Jeffrey Schwartz says the specimens look more like Australopithecines. Others like Tim White say Lee Berger made some basic mistakes. The Guardian, 2015. Tim White, UC Berkeley, quote, making sure you've got everything right is of critical importance. Rushing to suit National Geographic filmmakers is very dangerous, end quote. Berger's announcement of Homo naledi also sparked criticisms from some South African political leaders and leaders in the religious community. TrueAfrica.com Homo naledi has changed Africa's history, 2016. Bishop Siwa chimes in, quote, It was an insult to say black people are related to baboons, end quote. Continuing, the Homo naledi find is a bogus and misguided plot aimed at portraying Africans as being subhuman. Zwalini Vami stated, quote, I am no grandchild of an ape or monkey, end quote. Homo naledi even became a slur in South Africa. Two celebrity fashion models had a slugfest over their shared husband, finance minister Malusi Gigawa. Wuli Mengizi accused Norma Mgoma of being a quote unquote homo naledi. Mgoma responded in tweets accusing Mkizi of being a prostitute. Mgoma later divorced Gigawa. She then announced on a national television talk show that she was in a lesbian relationship. Round two. New excavation team, new discoveries. Caving team leader, Canadian Marina Elliott, 
was soon replaced by South African Kenailoi Molopiani. Dr. Elliott continued in a support role as a researcher. Berger soon announced the discovery of a partial skull of a homo lady child. They named the child Letty. The bones had been seemingly placed on a ledge at yet another previously unknown area of the cave system. During 2022, the team made even more amazing discoveries. Berger lost 52 pounds and crawled into the Dina Lady chambers himself. From Carnegie Science, how could Homo Lady deal in the dark, asked Lee Berger. Inside the chamber, he realized the roof had blackened areas with soot particles indicating an astounding use of fire. Later, his team found burnt animal bones in another chamber. Team leader and National Geographic explorer Kenailoi Molapiani was in another chamber. She discovered a cooking area, a tiny hearth with very specific burnt antelope bones. They even discovered what appeared to be engravings on the cave walls. Berger from National Geographic, January 5, 2023. Quote, these recent findings suggest an intentional burial. The use of symbols by Homo lady, this small brain species, was performing complex practices, end quote. Berger to ABC Australia's Sarah Kanowski, quote, My colleagues and I, 150 scientists, believe we may have an outgroup. Homo lady are bipedal, so they're hominids. They have a tiny brain. They're not adapting to the world the way we are and we've begun to find culture, end quote. Continuing, quote, within the next couple of months, you are going to see extraordinary discoveries. We're on the verge of, for the first time in human history, being able to examine a non-human species with culture, end quote. On June 5th, 2023, Lee Berger made his big announcement at Stony Brook University in New York. The university has a long-standing and well-respected paleoanthropology program. Critics immediately pounced. Michael Petraglia of the Australian Human Evolution Resource Center was quoted, quote, the jury is still out. The problem is they're ahead of the science, end quote. Rick Potts of the Smithsonian quoted in the New York Times, quote, scientists haven't been able to identify how old the engravings are. They could be from Homo sapiens, end quote. In 2020, a genetics team from UCLA, led by Sriram Sankararaman and Arun Dervasula, discovered up to 19% archaic ghost species DNA in sub-Saharan Africans. It was published at science.org, Recovering Signals of Ghost Archaic Introgression in African populations. Berger made a curious comment on a YouTube live stream with Georgina, World of Paleoanthropology, on October 20th, 2022. Quote, if it's species X, for example, you know, the missing species in the DNA of some African humans, it's there. I think there's a real chance of it, by the way. End quote. That echoed previous comments from Hawks. Quote, signatures within African populations show that there were contributions from different groups. We have ghost populations inside Africa. Something like Homo naledi might represent that ghost population. End quote. Professor Stephen Churchill of Duke University on YouTube's The Dissenter, September 2022. Quote, Homo lady is small brain, 550 cc, the size of a gorilla, a little ape man if you will. The work that's been done on the genome of sub-Saharan Africans, what they call ghost lineage, that could be Homo lady. end quote. The political situation in South Africa continues to deteriorate. The current administration of Cyril Ramaphosa has been plagued with scandal. Fresh water is being rationed. ESCOM is running on 65% capacity. Rolling blackouts of 5 to 10 hours of the day are the norm. From Business Tech, February 2023, 
South Africa saw an increase in violent crime between October and December 2022, with murder, assault, and robberies statistics climbing. Murders marking a 10% increase year on year. Sexual offenses also increased by 9.6%. A reverse apartheid has set in. Whites are increasingly confined to ghettos in the major cities. Many have chosen to flee. According to Business Tech, Stats South Africa estimates that 611,000 whites have left the country in the last 35 years. The government recently passed the Broad-Based Black Economic Empowerment Act, which legalizes discrimination against whites in employment. The BBBEE has had a particularly chilling effect on academic institutions, including the University of Witwatersrand. From science.org, July 2023, University of Toronto anthropology professor Lauren Schroeder, who grew up in South Africa, remembers that most of the paleoanthropological research in her country was conducted by foreign researchers. Quote, even though most of it is based in Africa, paleoanthropology is so white, end quote, she says. Netflix release, Cave of Bones. Cave of Bones was available for streaming on July 17th. Berger tweeted out on July 22nd that the documentary has reached the fourth highest ranking for worldwide viewership, according to GOTV. Other reports have it as high as third place for U.S. viewership. Berger has been hyping further discoveries to be announced in interviews and at speaking engagements. On July 2nd, he tweeted, This week, we start the next phase of field work. The old team is back on site and ready to explore. In a TED Talk late 2022, Dr. Mola Piani showed a video of her field assistants bringing her hominid fossils embedded in breccia rock from the 105 Malapa site. She offered only a few details. Berger gave further hints later on, tweeting out that they had recovered an almost fully intact clavicle bone and other bones. Did Berger, Molopiani, and the Rising Star team get the holy grail of paleoanthropology, DNA from Homo Malady? Given the current political situation in South Africa, release of archaic DNA admixture for small brain hominid linked to sub-Saharan Africans could prove to be a challenge, even for a swashbuckling Indiana Jones-style scientist like Lee Berger. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, leave a comment, and pass this video on to others. Thanks.